Hello my dear students, please watch this video to, f to do your homework. We are going to review the cellular structure as one of the characteristics of life. And all living organisms, you know, composed of one or more than one cells. If the living organism has only one cell, we call this organism unicellular. For example, this is bacteria and this is unicellular. And don't forget, bacteria are prokaryotes. And bacteria can be autotrophic and heterotrophic. It can produce its own food, some cyanobacteria, and it can, it can obtain food from other organisms. The second unicellular organism is paramecium. And paramecium is a protista. It's one of the member of protista kingdom. And paramecium is heterotrophic organism. It feeds on, it eats the other tiny little structures, tiny bacteria or other paramecium's other or other unicellular organisms. And a unicellular organism is Euglena and Euglena is eukaryotic organisms. Also paramecium is eukaryotic organisms. They have nucleus in their structure. And Euglena is very uh, different in their nutrition way. Euglena can be both autotrophic and heterotrophic. Autotrophic and heterotrophic. Because it have you see it have chloroplast and these green ones and by the help of this chloroplast it can produce its own food. When there is no light, it can also feed on other living organisms. So it's both autotrophic and heterotrophic, and it's another one, one member of it's the one of the member of protista kingdom. Therefore, it's eukaryotic. It has nucleus. This is amoeba, and amoeba is a unicellular organism. It's again is a protist. It means it have nucleus. It's a eukaryotic, and it feeds on other organisms, so it's heterotrophic. This is yeast. Actually, yeast are unicellular fungi, and this unicell because they are uh, fungi, they are at they are eukaryotes. And yeast are cannot produce its own food, they are heterotrophic. If we start with multicellular organisms, uh, animals and plants are multicellular organisms. For example, these meat cats are animals and they are heterotrophic. But the plants can produce its own food by photosynthesis, therefore they are autotrophic. Both of them are eukaryotic organisms. Both have nucleus in their cell cells. Other multicellular organisms can be algae and fungi. Algae, actually these algaes are one of the members of protista kingdom. But they are not unicellular, they are multicellular. These algaes can make photosynthesis, therefore they are autotrophic, autotrophic, autotrophic. And they can produce its own food, but they have nucleus, so they are eukaryotes. Fungi, you see mushrooms here. Mushrooms, fungi, cannot produce its own food, therefore they are heterotrophic. And they are again eukaryotes. They have nucleus. If we divide the cell into two parts, there are prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. And these are the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. 
Prokaryotic cells do not have nucleus. It's the most important one. Do not have nucleus and nuclear envelope, nuclear membrane. But eukaryotic cells have nucleus. Prokaryotic cells do not have membrane and closed organelles such as mitochondria, chloroplast, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi. These all are membrane and closed, so prokaryotes do not have any of them. But eukaryotic cells have membrane and closed organelles. Prokaryotic cells in prokaryotic cells, DNA is located in the cytoplasm, but in eukaryotic cells, DNA is in the nucleus. Prokaryotic cells, DNA is circular, but eukaryotic cells, DNA is double helix structure and it's linear. The only organelle in prokaryotes are ribosome, but there are many organelles also the ribosome present in eukaryotic cells. The example for prokaryotic cells are bacteria and archaea. These are the two kingdoms and these kingdom members are prokaryotic cells. But eukaryotic cells found in protista, plants, animals and fungi kingdoms. This is the structure of prokaryotic cell. You see there are three layers, three layers. The, in the inside there is a plasma membrane or cell membrane. On the cell membrane there is a cell wall and this cell wall is composed of peptidoglycan molecule. Molecule. It composed of peptidoglycan molecule, and there is a capsule outside the, the some bacteria, and this capsule prevents pr the protects the bacteria. There is a cytoplasm inside the bacterial cell, prokaryotic cells, and the only organelle is the ribosome, and it's responsible for protein synthesis. There are some structures called pili outside of the outside of the prokaryotic cells this pili is used for attachment attachment of attachment of this bacteria to the medium or to to the other bacteria and there is a plasmid here and these are small dnas small dna particles there is a big DNA, there is a big circular DNA inside and this DNA uh, is in the cytoplasm but there is a specific region we call nucleoid region. So this is the nucleoid region, there is a circular DNA in the cytoplasm of prokaryotic cell. It has cell, cytoplasm, cell membrane, cell wall, some of them have capsule, some of them have plasmid, some of them have pili on the outside. And all of them have ribosomes. For, and this is the eukaryotic cell. This is an animal cell. Therefore, there is no chloroplast. But plant cells also eukaryotic cells. You see there is a nucleus. And DNA is located in the nucleus. There is a cytoplasm. There is some molecules in the protein molecules in the cytoskeleton. Again, there is a ribosome, but except from ribosome, there are other membrane enclosed organelles, mitochondria, lysosome, Golgi, endoplasmic reticulum, and other organelles. There are some similarities between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Both have plasma membrane, both have DNA, both have cytoplasm, and both have ribosome, also both have RNA also. Ribosome is the only organelle found in all types of cells and ribosome is not membrane enclosed. Not membrane enclosed. There is no membrane outside of the ribosome. So, because all cells have ribosome and because all living organisms are made up of cells, 
Therefore, all living organism can make protein synthesis. So we can say it's one of the characteristics of life. And if the ribosome in the cytoplasm, it uh, collect the amino acids. This is the monomer of protein. Monomer building of pro building blocks of protein of protein. And this monomer is attached to each other by the help of ribosome in the cytoplasm and these monomers is bond to each other and they synthesize protein. The big structure we are going to call protein and this is this is done by ribosome. We mentioned the plasmid. What is the function of plasmid? Plasmid carries some genes on it. What is the function of pili for the attachment to the environment or to the other bacterium? What is the function of flagellum? Flagellum, actually flagellum is the long structure outside of the bacteria and this flagellum is for movement. What is the name of the molecule that bacterial cell are composed of? Peptidoglycan. And what is the monomer of proteins? Amino acids. Okay, you can now do your homework.